Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Esther Arkanj, and I am an academic trainer with the Center for Teaching and Learning. Today's session is titled Digging for Data with librarians June Kim, Jamie Deermere, and faculty member Dr. Cynthia Marcello. Thank you for being here with us today. Just a reminder, I am recording the webinar and the video will be posted on the CTL Live Guides page and the CTL YouTube page within 24 hours. If you have questions throughout today's session, please use the Q&A for a conversation and use the chat feature located at the bottom of the Zoom window. With that, I would like to turn it over to Jamie Demir. Hi everyone, and thank you for attending our presentation today. So just to give an overview, we'll, we will be talking about the world of data, what it is, how to find it in our library, and some expert advice from our faculty member, Cynthia Marcello. So again, I am Jamie Deermere. I'm a librarian here, and I'm joined by June Kim, my colleague, also a librarian, and Dr. Cynthia Marcello. And I'll pass it over to June Kim. Thank you, Jamie, for the intro, um, and Esther as well, um, Dr. Marcello for being here. Um, so, so as Jamie mentioned, um, Dr. Marcello will, um, she'll do her talk first, but um, after that, we'll just, just a quick outline of what we'll go over. We'll go over some important notes to remember about locating data sets, some contextual information, um, We'll go over some definitions and then, of course, uh, where to locate data sets. And then uh, we could provide a sample. We'll provide a quick sample search we did, and then also some information about cleaning and citing data sets. So please take it away, Dr. Marcello. Absolutely. It's nice to be with you all. And I just want to thank uh, June, Kim, and Jamie Deermere for inviting me to uh, speak on behalf of data, something I'm very passionate about. And um, I am a subject matter expert for the School of Technology, and I've been working with databases and data science for many, many years. Uh, so one of the things that I often get questions about is where can we find data and are there data sets that we can download that are uh, free to use, as it were. So an open or public data set is basically a data set that is provided for the public to avail themselves to to download either for research purposes and or data science purposes, data analysis purposes, or uh, to include into your research uh, papers and projects. So there are a plethora of data sets out there and uh, in the presentation, we will show some of those uh, websites. So I highly recommend that you maybe bookmark those and the library has a lot of those cataloged as well in LibGuides. Another thing that's important is thinking of searching outside of the library environment uh, using tools like Google Scholar um, or interlibrary loan uh, to find out what data is out there, uh, either in different repositories, but that are shared in a corroborative way. So perhaps it's other researchers that have posted their data, their findings on different websites, and maybe they are cataloged, uh, you know, in a different uh, setting outside side of the library. Letting your colleagues know about those resources is also very useful and also sharing those with the librarians as well so that th those could be added in. Uh, Kaggle is another great website that a lot of data scientists use, a lot of students learning how to work with data. Kaggle, is, you know, Kaggle.com is a, a very um, collaborative space where people engage in data science projects and focus on different types of machine learning and um, very specific uh, data science uh, projects that are 
sometimes uh, for the purposes of competition and sometimes just for the purposes of learning. So for example, one of the reasons I recommend students go to Kaggle is how do we organize data uh, about a specific, uh, specific topic, right? And what does it mean to uh, analyze that data in a specific way? So Kaggle is a great resource. And then another source is Mockaroo. So Mockaroo is a website that you can join for free or you could use the paid version. And that allows you to actually create data sets that you can utilize either for testing purposes uh, to test different scenarios, or you can bring in data that you have downloaded from other sources and create a relational data set out of that. So Makaru allows you to clean your data. It allows you to analyze the data by looking at it in a tabular form or related form. Uh, so I highly recommend that, uh, you know, data set uh, we'll call it a data munging website where you can actually just store your data sets, share them with others, provide links to those data sets as well. So that's a site I highly recommend. All right. Um, just important to keep in mind that the precise data set that you might be looking for may not exist. It may not have ever been collected. Um, a silly example could be uh, you want to know who likes grilled cheese, sandwiches or peanut butter and jelly sandwiches that just data may not have ever been collected so that's just something to keep in mind and at the library we can definitely help you search and we can offer some guidance about whether that data may be available or not for your specific needs um, in other cases it might be held privately by a private organization and not available to the public sometimes we do uh, recommend contacting that organization but still they might not be willing to release that um, so it's just good to be flexible and consider alternate measures to support your research. It's also good to keep in mind data set versus statistics and which one to use in what situation. Uh, and June can talk a bit more about that next. Okay, so um, we will go into the differences between the data set and statistics in a bit, but for now, um, Let's address why would you look for a data set? So um, looking for and using a data set in your research can add an extra le level of depth and credibility in explaining the problem or purpose of your dissertation. Um, it allows you to examine past trends on your topic and extrapolate into the future. Um, and it um, provides relevance with aligning with your research goal. So why are data sets so hard to find? Um, so at the moment, um, like I said before, it could be held privately. Um, it's also extremely fragmented. Um, each domain could have their own preferred repository and it's just all over the place. Um, so it can be a bit tricky. And browsing through the results in a data set search is pretty complex and time consuming due to data records, questionnaires, method reports, different types of data. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind when you're looking at the world of data out there. Okay, so um, what is a data set? Um, so a data set is simply put a collection of data and it's, um, you can also think of it as precise record keeping about observations. There's um, data sets that are only have one variable and others that have multiple variables. Uh, and um, the difference between a data set and a statistic or uh, uh, interpreted data is that, uh, so data sets usually refer to raw data, so it has not been manipulated. Um, in other words, you can use the same data set for different purposes. Um, or as um, statistics usually mean that it's already been interpreted. All right, uh, so here's an example of raw data versus interpreted data. Um, so here on the left-hand side, you'll see raw data is just numbers, figures, text. Um, it's, you, it requires interpreting. And then on the left-hand side, or on the right-hand side, they made it really pretty. They did a graph here of, um, it's the number of unique words used within artist lyrics. And so they've added the little bobbleheads there and um, just, and they made it pretty. And that's what you might see in a database like Statista. 
Um, so they make it with graphs and um, charts. So that's interpreted uh, versus a raw data set like you might find on say Google data sets um, or Kaggle, something like that. Okay, so where can I look for data sets? Um, there are several, um, several locations that you can look to um, within the library and um, outside the library, like Dr. Marcello mentioned. Um, and this is just an overview, but um, so you can use Sage Datasets, which is a database that is included in our library. Um, you can use it to practice using data sets. And you can also, they, it does have a smaller collection of data sets that you can browse. Um, and they're very organized within this database. Um, you can also look for data sets using Google data set search. Um, and we can go into that a little bit later, but Google data set searches, personally, it's been, the best option when I'm searching, um, only because I'm not familiar with all the individual subject specific repositories out there. Um, so what Google Dataset Search does is it searches any data set that's been published um, across just every platform. So it'll include like Kaggle and Figshare and just pulls from everywhere. And then uh, regular Google, you can also try regular Google using key data set as a keyword, um, just to see if you might catch anything that hasn't been included in, in the repositories. Also um, looking in the searching the Roadrunner database is might, might get you some data set results. Um, Basically, you would be searching within the journal articles to see if the author has used a data set that you can use. Often, you'll have to contact the author to request it, however. Um, and it's the same with the NCU dissertations. So you can search if students search for dissertations that students have published um, using primary and secondary data sets within their dissertations. Um, and then, and then the individual repositories, which I think Dr. Marcello will has the expertise in, um, is also also a place that you will want to search for your data sets. Um, so these will be like, well, they're not always subject specific. They can be general re general repositories with multiple subjects. Um, but yeah, you can. They're each their unique um, platform, individual platform that you would go to to search for the data sets. Um, these, I think we were going to ask Dr. Mar uh, Marcella if she could um, talk about. Absolutely, absolutely. So as June said, uh, a lot of times, depending on the domain of interest, you may choose to uh, utilize specific repositories that focus on uh, different subject areas. And so for example, in the sciences, um, if you go to nature.com and you, you were to search nature.com, naturally you're going to find a lot of biodiversity type data sets. Um, you're going to find uh, a lot of uh, data sets that involve animal research and or plants or fauna, flora, and things of that nature, anything that you can envision in uh, nature, right? Uh, and, and including weather related data. So sometimes there's an overlap there. So if you're, uh, if you know what domain of interest that you are focusing on, maybe for your research or what have you, you want to think about repositories that align with your interest area. So if it's about, you know, geological or soil or what have you, um, you want to search, you know, enhance your search string in Google or whatever tool you're using to include the domain area plus the repository, data set repository uh, lingo, if you will, and that will help you identify some of those. Um, Observable.com. Um, I'm not going to share my screen, but if you do have uh, a browser in front of you and you want to quickly do a search for Observable, 
Um, observable, actually, I think the link is um, different than, than just observable.com. If I remember correctly, let me bring it up here. It's probably one that I'm not remembering, and it isn't. So is it okay, June, if I paste it in the chat for folks? Oh, wonderful. Yeah, of course. Okay, mm -hmm. awesome. Okay, so it's a long URL. And of course, I would have never remembered it. So um, it's observablehq.com. And if you go to that particular link, you will note that there is a ton of curated data sets. So the data curation process are basically a co collaborative process by which a group of researchers and or colleagues get together and they curate data for the purposes of sharing with others. So when you see the word curated, it's it's really about the passion of, you know, sharing that information. So on the Observable HQ website, you'll see real data sets designed for the ease of use, meaning they've done a lot of the cleaning, they've done a lot of the uh, uh, normalizing the data as it were and putting it in formats like Excel or using an API if you want to use uh, you know an application to pull that data in or simply some CSV files. So they provide it in a format that's very commonly desired um, into you know different types of software. But you'll notice on the observable website it's a whole plethora of topics, right? It goes from sales data to bats in caves. Okay. It's it's this whole continuum. So the the purpose of that website is it's a repository curation network and it's basically um, th the topics are all over the place. So in your Google search, if you get really savvy at that, you would pull this data set from or, or a data set from this website because of your ability to search for those uh, those search strings. OK, so one of the key things is knowing what domain of interest am I focused on? Is it more than one domain? And how do I form that search when I'm doing that search for the repository? Um, the Opportunity Project is another one that um, it is actually opportunity.census.gov.data. I'm, I'm going to share it in the chat here. It's so much easier to share it. And when you go to that website, it's really about census data. However, census data, we, we tend to look at it as, you know, uh, demographic type data. And what they've done is they've expanded these data sets to include things like spending on, you know, the, the pandemic or climate, uh, you know, climate concerns, uh, data sets that focus on, you know, uh, topics that people are very interested in sea level rise or uh, risk preparedness in different uh, geographical locations. So again, you can see it's very niche and very eclectic uh, or the natural environment. They have data sets about pollution and agriculture and things of that nature. So this is where the census has expanded their offerings to include things that society uh, uh, deems important, right? And impacts us all. So that's another really good one. Um, the Europeana website, now this one is, this is also a very uh, interesting repository. Again, you can see these are all over the place. They're all over the board. And that's because when you're digging for data, it's like an archaeological dig. You're literally spending time looking for uh, those things that you're interested in. Um, so if they seem like they're all over the place, they are. Um, all right, so now I'm going to, um, I did just pay, paste that link. Um, hopefully that comes up. Um, let's see here. I'm having a little trouble getting to the website. I don't know if maybe their website is down. It's possible. It is um, in Australia, uh, or not in Australia, I'm sorry, in Europe. And sometimes because of internet connectivity, the website might be down. So that one does not seem to be functioning uh, so we'll go to another one. Now, this next one I am super, super excited about because it's about data curation. So I just pasted that link in. Now, data curation is about finding the data sets that you are um, wanting to share with others or collaborate on as a group. So websites like this are about reusing data in a responsible way, but also in a way that helps the global good, 
right? You'll see a lot of these types of websites. Um, so academic institutions participate. And you'll notice there's a link at the top called data sets and data curated by DCN, meaning the data curation network. These folks have gotten together as a, a group of colleagues and aggregated data based on research studies that they all have been participating in. So for example, you'll see things about Atlantis ship data, or um, you'll see things like uh, density of zebra mussels. You know, how eclectic is that? But let's say that's your research area, right? Now you have access to quality data, but you also, um, okay, you cannot see the links. Um, I've posted them in the chat. Are you able to click on those links in the chat? I Hopefully. see the problem. Um, ah. Dr. Marcelo, you're, you have to press everyone. So currently links, maybe I can go in. Oh, uh, you know what? You are correct. And I apologize. Unfortunately, I do not have everyone in my list. So mm -hmm. maybe somebody could pass those along. I do, yeah. So I apologize. Yeah. I may be able mm -hmm. to, then I can see the list of what the comments in the chat so I can, yeah. I can get out to everyone. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. I would have never known that. So thank you for letting us know. Excellent. Did you, did you want to share your screen? I can do or? that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Let me go ahead and do that. Um, that would be oh, super. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Here we go. So I'm going to share this one. Now, um, what I was referring to earlier is under data sets and data curated by DCN. A lot of these websites you can see are superbly eclectic and niche, right? So you'll see that the topics are all over the place. They are highly scientific in this case, right? So let's say you were looking at, your research was looking at some of these topics, all right? Some of them are not topics that maybe I, you or I might be interested in, but that's not to say that others are not. So here's an example, harbor, harbor porpoise responses. And this is actually a study of porpoise behavior um, to some of the noise that they experience in the water based on ships and things of that nature. So here there is a DOI link. Um, this is actually data that has been um, cited properly. Remember, if you're going to be using your website, um, you know, search, you're going to be using some of these data sets out there. This is how they want you to cite it. Um, so they have listed that out there. So it's always considered proper to do that. Um, it also shows you the curating partner. So this happens to be a, a University of Illinois. Um, the curators, the subject. So you actually have people that you could contact if you wanted to collaborate uh, on this research. So if you, um, if you scroll down, you can actually see who is supporting this as well. All right, so let's say this is the data that you wanted to work with, all right? You'll see the metadata um, and they'll actually break it down for you. Um, there's a lot of different information here and I'm sure if you go into the library, they can explain all this to you. Obviously the data has to be stored mm -hmm. properly and so on and so forth, right? So this information has been provided. Now the data files, one thing I really wanna, show you here is the data files are stored in an environment outside of the library, but this is a quality data set. So um, they provide backups and things of that nature, okay? Um, so all of this, I'm just gonna scroll past this because this this will take a long time um, to, to go through. This is what they usually do is they'll tell you, um, you know, how to cite it. So if they do provide that citation, the, it, you're considered, you know, responsible to do that, all right, to, to sort of give back. So I click the link, and when I click the link, this takes you to the title of the study, all right? It takes you to a PDF, which is the, the, the uh, article, the journal article, and of course, the data, and, and so on and so forth. So you would literally download it from this and you would communicate with the authors as you would seek to. All right, so this is the whole study um, with all the information, all right? Um, so this is a simple example. Uh, let me go back to another one here, which is from the, um, let me just put that link in there. This is the National Library of Medicine, okay? Now, I'm gonna just uh, bring this over so you can see it. Obviously, highly scientific. There's a lot about genes, genomes, 
uh, things that have to do with coronavirus, because that's been the latest uh, you know, topic of discussion for many reasons. So let's say you were looking for a particular species within a genome, all right? Here is your search area, okay? And you can also search by a taxonomy. So if this is part of your research, this is how you get into the different classification areas for data. Um, and this is how you would start doing your searches. You could also do a command line search if you're familiar, but you don't have to. So I'm just going to pick one of these. Um, I'm going to go with E. coli. Why not? Um, <laughs> let's say that's my topic of interest, right? So here it takes me into all the different genomes and these are all data sets connected to the genome. So I could download any one of these data sets. All right. Um, I can also browse the taxonomy and there's typically contact people or contact links that I could go to to expand my search. So this is why it's called digging for data. It's, it's an iterative approach, um, drilling down, drilling through the data to get at that which you're looking for. All right. So it's not an, an easy fix, but it's doable. All right. And this comes from the National Library of Medicine. OK, um, you can see there's a bunch here, uh, SARS-CoV, and here is how to download. So all the data, how to retrieve the data and the metadata. Remember, metadata describes the data. So this has all the important pieces of information that are relevant to the variables of interest, okay? So they give you a lot of great instructions and in how to get to those uh, pieces. The other thing to remember is data, site, data sets come up based on interests from other folks. So here is a data set genome page dedicated to everything about the genome. Right. And if this is part of your research, this is going to be very valuable to you. This is one that you're going to want to bookmark because sharing it with colleagues, but also getting back to this to do that future research is going to be very, very important. Um, and then one final one that I'm going to share. And by the way, this is by no means, um, you know, this is not all there is. Um, I could spend hours on this and I'm sure that you could, too. But you'll notice that we go to the public genome data uh, website, which is Complete Genomics. This is a free public access web page for the whole human genome data set. Um, this is all of their sequencing that they've done. So there's a lot of research that's been done. There's a lot of hard work that's been done. And the data is freely available um, for use in publication with some stipulations, which they list here. But just to get access to this type of data is so valuable. All right. So you'll notice there's a variety of different links here. Um, they tell you how to get to their their particular, uh, you know, sample pairs and tumors and things of that nature, and also um, who to contact if you want to collaborate. OK, so that's what I have for these. Again, not a, a finite list, but just sort of a a smattering of of uh, of resources. Thank you so much for that. Uh, yeah, it. I think, um, yes, yeah, students can always ask faculty ex with expertise on uh, recommendations for data set sites. Um, OK, so let me go back to where we were. And I think this is mm -hmm. Jamie. Yeah. Yeah, I can. OK, so switching gears a little bit, um, something slightly less technical, maybe. Um, but we have gotten this question before at the library. Um, so for nursing retention or turnover. So just an example of what we have um, provided for student in this particular situation. Um, so Google, um, it's OK to use Google as your first resort. However, just make sure that you're using reputable sources. Edu and gov are the best. Um, as it says here on the right hand side, data.gov is a really good one, but they might not have what you're looking for. Um, Google data set, we found some success with that one. So um, typing in um, in Google data sets, we did find one on Statista, which is a database that we subscribe to as well. So it pulled the nursing turnover rate in 2020, um, as well as from 2016 to 2020. And it had another source from the University of Melbourne. Uh, for um, retaining early career registered nurses. So Google data set in this situation turned out to be the best 
um, the best results. Um, but some other repositories you can go to, uh, we didn't find any success with Figshare. Um, Bureau of Labor Statistics is usually very general. Uh, it does require some sifting and possible relevant or ir irrelevant results, um, but mainly employment percentages on that site. Um, but that's just a, a process of what we would go to go through at the library to help you get data. So we would go through our library, Google, Google data set, and then check out some individual repositories as well as maybe some health administration websites, um, dot, uh, gov especially. Um, right, June? Thank you. Um, we can show you where to access our um, library guide on data sets as well. There's a listing of many data set uh, websites, repositories there. Um, I'll put it in the link. But um, in terms of, so another question that um, comes along with locating and using data sets are, messy data sets. So sometimes students um, find data sets, but they haven't been cleaned. Um, we have a couple of tools that you can, we suggest that you can use to clean them. There's OpenRefine at openrefine.org. And we also, um, as we mentioned earlier, we have Sage data sets the SAGE datasets database as part of the library. That database includes the SPSS tool and the Academic Success Center can assist you with using SPSS. So we do get this question sometimes, do I need to cite datasets? Um, the answer is always yes. Um, even if it's a public source, um, always remember to cite it. Uh, the citation should include the creator, title, year, repository, and persistent identifier. Usually that's a DOI. Um, currently, there is no standard format for referencing data sets, um, but following APA or MLA referencing style. But always, always, always go to the Academic Success Center um, to ask for citation help especially with tricky um, situations like data sets, and then they can, they are really the authority and they can help you to um, cite it properly, both in text and in your reference list. So that wraps it up for our data set presentation. And um, you can feel free to contact us at a later time if you have other questions. Well, we're opening it up to questions now, but our contact information is here for uh, if you need to contact us later. Cynthia Marcello, Jamie Dermier, myself, June Kim, or you could email the library as well. Are there any questions? Awesome. Thank you all for the presentation. Uh, just a reminder to everyone, uh, the, the floor is open to questions. We'll be taking questions if you have them. Don't be shy. Um, also, a reminder that this is being recorded. So if you don't have a chance to see the whole thing or you want to come back, um, I will be sending out this information to you all later. Questions for our presenters? We're getting a lot of thank yous in the chat. I'll just stop the share to grab the link to put in the chat for our lip guide. Okay. And uh, just also, I also, uh, the links that Dr. Marcelo put in earlier, I was able to go back and relink them in the chat. So you all should have access to those as well. Thank and you. then I'll, I'll go back and email them to you again, just for fun. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Going to our... We'll wait for June to send those links. All right. So I, in addition, I, I definitely want you all to... Um, they did mention some other additional resources that will be helpful to you, uh, making sure you utilize the resources that are available to you 
um, like the library, you all have the library chat as well. Am I correct on that? Um, there's also, she mentioned the Academic Success Center that can also give you additional help. Um, I will be linking that, uh, those uh, links to those sites in the email that I send you all later on. Um, all right. Um, well, if we don't have any more questions, um, June, Jamie, Dr. Marcella, would you like to add anything in terms of closing? I would like to add something really quick. Uh, be persistent in your search and assume that the data exists. Don't assume the inverse. Um, and if the data, you find it, assume that it is not necessarily clean and that you may need to work with it, pre-process it before you can use it. Uh, but uh, stay true to your search and don't give up. And the library is a great resource to help you. That was my fault earlier. Okay. See what oh, happened I think there. I did the same. I might have done the same thing. Let me try to reset. Okay. Mine is there. Oh yeah, I did the same thing. Okay, let me okay. try. Okay. So we're we're getting more links in there for you all, folks. And I'll try and see if I can take this from the chat as well and add it to the email. So just in case you missed it, you'll get it later. <clears throat> Thank you. All right. Got all our links in there. All right. Um, any other, anything else to add before closing? All right. So um, thank you all for joining us today. Uh, thank you, June, Kim, Jamie, Jamir, and Dr. Cynthia Marcello for taking the time to present. And thank you to the attendees for joining. I hope the information you gained today was informative. As a reminder, the recording will be posted to the CTL LibGuides page as well as our CTL YouTube page within 24 hours. Have a good one and thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.